Hello everyone and welcome to the My Leo Photos Coffee Break. My name is Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about sync collections which is a relatively new feature in My Leo Photos to help you control what is synced to each device. Before we jump into today's topic, let's go ahead and take a look at some of our upcoming events. Now, just a heads up, I haven't updated this slide for next week's event, so you're seeing what we had this week. Um, but I wanted to let you know that if you haven't joined Lori's Ready, Set, Go sessions, if you're a new user, or maybe just need kind of a refresher on how to use MyLeo Photos, make sure you join at myleo.com slash ready, set, go. Uh, Lori, who's here today and helping out in the chat and gonna be sharing some helpful links, holds her own sessions on morning and afternoon sessions and self-paced options Monday through Friday for new users. So please make sure you join those. She'll get you started with all of the building blocks you need to be successful. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have open Q&A. Anyone is welcome to join these. So whether you are a longtime user or you're brand new and just starting out, all questions are welcome. And we cover everything from photography, family history, Mylia photo specific, Anything kind of within that realm is fair game, and I'm always happy to help with anything that you guys come at me with. Don't always have the answers, but I will do my best. And then every Friday we have these sessions called Coffee Breaks where we have a short tutorial, followed by, by more open Q&A. Today we're going to be talking about sync collections. Next week you're not going to see it up on the screen there. We're going to be talking about exporting and sharing. So hopefully you guys can join us for that next Friday. Uh, we also have a variety of other webinars and special events that we do, and those are peppered throughout the month. You can go to community.myleo.com slash events and find all of our upcoming events, and we always have some good stuff planned for you guys. So let's go ahead and jump into today's presentation, and we're going to talk about, about customizing device syncing with sync collections. So sync collections are new and were just introduced in Myleo Photos 24.4, which came out last week. So this is very new. You've been able to customize what syncs to each device for a very long time. This makes it easier and you can visually see what's happening. So I'm going to walk you through the process of using this new tool. Hopefully you guys like it. Let me know what you think afterwards. Uh, we'll have a poll at the end where you can add some of your feedback. If you like this new feature, let me know. I'll share that with our team because they worked really, really hard on that. So let's go ahead and dive into using sync collections. What we're gonna to cover today is what is a device sync policy, understanding sync policy presets, how to customize what syncs to a specific device, and creating custom sync policy presets. So the first thing I wanna do is start off here with creating a custom sync collection for my laptop. I'm gonna give you a few scenarios today. These aren't hard and fast rules. These are just kind of ideas to get you going on how the tool works. So when you do a sync collection, what you're gonna do is start out with a base device sync policy. So what is a device sync policy? That is what tells MyLeo what to sync to any given device. So I'm gonna go here into MyLeo, into the dashboard, and you're gonna click on devices and then select a device. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my laptop here and into device sync policies. And that's gonna show you what I have currently set up on this particular laptop. I have it set to Space Saver, which keeps compressed, optimized images of as much as Mylio can store on this computer. So I have a good viewing experience. It's not keeping my originals here, so it's managing the space so it doesn't get overwhelmed, but it's trying to give me a really good viewing experience by keeping the optimized versions there, not just thumbnails. And that's automatic for uh, your laptops, for your mobile phones, things like that. Typically, your viewing devices are going to be set to Space Saver by default. Now, you can control this and customize this in a variety of ways. And so what I'd like to do today is customize this to show my original quality photos for 2024 and 2023, all of my original quality photos in my category called Portfolio, and then keep optimized versions always of all of my pictures with four and five stars and all of my pictures that have pick flags. Now, you'll wanna consider how much storage space you have on a particular device when you're setting up a sync policy. This laptop happens to have a two terabyte hard drive, so I have a lot of space to work with. If you're working with less space, you might need to be a little bit more conservative in what you save in original quality. Also consider that video files take up more room than photos. So you'll notice here that I'm specifying for original quality, I only wanna have my original quality photos for these two. 
I don't necessarily want to have videos or I don't want to have documents. Um, now you can certainly add those if that's something that you need and want to have locally. And what this facilitates is if I am not on the internet and I don't have any of my vaults connected, this means that these files will always be available even when I'm offline on this laptop. So this makes it easy for me to go sit at a local coffee house. Maybe I don't want to get on their public Wi-Fi, and I don't want to use up the data plan to tether on my phone, and I want to be able to work on my recent files in their full quality glory. So that makes my life really easy. And then having my best photos here from my portfolio, my four and five stars, and my pics, that makes it so if I run into somebody who's interested in maybe seeing my photos, I wanna share something in my portfolio, maybe they're interested in buying something, that would be pretty cool. Um, I have those in a really good quality that I can share with them. So that's kind of my rationale for why I'm gonna set up my laptop with this particular setup. So let's go ahead and do this. And we're gonna do this with four separate sync collections. And that'll give you an idea of how you can configure this for your own stuff. So let's go ahead and start with original quality photos for 2024 and 2023. So I'm gonna go back here. I have Space Saver set as my baseline preset. So you're gonna to have to choose a preset for your baseline. Space Saver is a really good one. I would say also Travel Backup is another good one, but for most things, you're gonna choose Space Saver. And then down here under Image Policy, you see you have a tab for Originals and a tab for Optimize. So you can choose which one you wanna target. In this one, we're gonna target our original quality photos. So now I'm gonna go here and say add sync collection. And this is gonna open up a new browser where you can visually see what's included in this sync collection. And I want to have everything from 2024 and 2025, or 2024 and 2023. Uh, 2025 will be in there eventually, but not yet. And I'm gonna go ahead and expand by date and by year. We're gonna go into 2020s and I'm gonna pin 2024 and 2023. And you'll notice that my collection here is refreshed to only show media from those dates. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out way out here and you can see if I go down here, grab my little scroll bar here and scroll all the way to the bottom and let that go ahead and refresh. The files that are down here are gonna be only things from those two years. So once I have that set, I'm gonna go ahead and click done up here in the upper right corner and I can add a name for my sync collection. And we're just gonna call this 2024 or 2023 to 2024. And we can say everything. So that's everything from those two. Um, now, one thing that I did do, I mentioned I wanted this to only be photos. I wanted to exclude videos. Let me go ahead and cancel this and I'm gonna refresh this here. And instead of having it just have my dates, I'm gonna also limit this by file and by file type, and I'm gonna pin just photos. So that goes ahead again one more time and refreshes this, so now it's only showing those particular categories. That's what I wanted. So now I can go back here and click done, and we're gonna say 2023, 2023 to 2024, and photos, and click save. So now you'll see here, over here under image policies, I have 2023, 2024 photos, if I click on the view here, it's gonna take me to view all of those images. Um, I didn't apply that yet, so that's why it's doing this. Um, let me go ahead and pop back here. When you make a change like this, you are gonna have the option here to apply changes. And that change is not gonna to apply to that device until you click that. And I hadn't clicked that yet, that's why I got that. So you can click on the eye to see all of the media contained. You can drop this down to see exactly what pills, what quick filters are contained here. If you wanna edit it, you can go ahead and click on that pencil and go back in and change the parameters for this particular sync collection. And if you wanna get rid of it, you can go ahead and click that X. So let's go ahead and create the next one here. I wanted to do original quality photos for everything in my portfolio category. So this spans many years, much outside of 2023 and 24. So let's go ahead and go add sync collection. And I wanna go by category, and I'm gonna go down to portfolio. And these are some of my best works that I have on my online website, and I wanna make sure I have them at full quality available on my computer whenever I need them. So I'm gonna go ahead and say done, and we're gonna call that portfolio. So save, and now we have here, there is portfolio, there is 2023, 2024 photos, and I can say apply changes. And that goes ahead and applies it and tells Miley to start syncing those files. 
Now let's go ahead and do a couple more here. I wanna have all of my four and five stars optimized and all of my pick flags optimized. And again, these are gonna be two separate sync collections because when you add them all at once, it goes in as an or statement. And I want it to be an and. I want it to do all of my four and five stars and I want it to add all my pick flags. So I'm gonna do two separate sync collections for this. So from here, instead of being in the originals tab, now we're gonna switch over to optimized. And I'm gonna do add sync collection. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna hit the backslash key here to go ahead and collapse my quick filter so I can see them all. And go up here to by rating, label, and flag, and let's just add four and five star. And that's gonna go ahead and grab all of those images. And I'm gonna say done. And let's say four and five star optimized. And you can call this whatever you want. Go ahead and click save. Now we have our four and five star optimized. And let's add one more, and that's where I wanna add my pick flags. And this is a pretty big collect collection of images. So I, that's probably one of my loosest categorizations. These are things that maybe I wanna work on, things that I like. There's tons of images in my library that have pick flags. And that's why I'm doing this at only the optimized quality. Because if I did everything, that'd probably take up quite a bit of space. So I'm gonna go ahead and say done, and just do picks and save. And there we have it. So now I have my optimized and my four and five stars. I've got my picks. Those are here under the optimized category. And under my originals, I've got my portfolio, 2023, 2024, and I can say apply changes. And now if I go ahead and open up my sync pop panel here, you'll see that Milio is working on transferring all of that media that I want saved to this device. So it's gonna be sitting here cranking away for a little while making sure that all of those files that I just told it that I want stored locally end up here on this computer. So before we go any further, let me go ahead and check the chat here, see if there's any questions before we go set up another device. So I wanna give you guys a lot of options here as to how you can use this because there's a lot of flexibility and each one of us has kind of our own separate needs for this. So we did our laptop. Now let's go ahead and set up an iPad. My iPad has one terabyte hard drive. So again, I'm gonna use the space saver and I only want my original photos for 2024 and my original quality photos for everything in my portfolio and then optimized again for those four and five star and pick flags. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna set that up right now. So I'm gonna go back here into Milio and I'm gonna choose my iPad. And you can do this for another device from another device. So you don't have to be on that device to go ahead and set this up. Now it's not gonna start syncing right away if that device is all offline. So you can see my iPad right now is not in use. As soon as I open up Milio on my iPad, it will start syncing any changes I make here. So I'm gonna go here into device sync policies and I'm gonna go ahead and clear my previous policies that I made. And we're just gonna start fresh. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose space saver here. Perfect, so I'm back at the blank space saver. And I wanna do all of my original quality photos for 2024. So again, we're gonna click on the originals tab, add sync collection and we're gonna go into by date, by year, and 2020s, we're gonna pin 2024. And again, we're gonna go down to by file, by file type, and we're only gonna do photos here. So everything from 2024 in my photos is gonna get synced to my iPad. So I'm gonna go ahead and click done, and 2024 photos, and save. So there we go, now I've got my 2024 photos. The next thing I wanted to do was original quality for everything with the category portfolio. So we're gonna to go to add sync collection and we're gonna to go to buy category and down to portfolio, go ahead and click the pin and then we can click done and call that portfolio. There we go and save. So now we have 2024 photos and portfolio here under originals. Now I also wanna have all of my optimized quality files with four and five stars and optimized quality photos with my pick flag. So let's go ahead and jump over to that optimized tag real quick. And we're gonna go ahead and add sync collection. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse that list there on the left with that backslash and go here into rating label and flag, four and five stars. And we're gonna go ahead and then click done. And we're gonna call that four to five stars and save. All right, so there's our four and five stars. And one more, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add our pick flags 
and click done. And actually one more thing I'm gonna do here, since this device has um, more limited storage, I do have videos that I've marked with pick flags too. So I'm gonna specify here specifically that I only want that to be photos. So by file type and photos. So that's gonna limit it a little bit. And click done and flagged photos. There we go and save. So now I've added that other parameter here to my sync collection list. I'm gonna click apply changes. And then as soon as I bring my iPad online, it's gonna start syncing that. So you can see over here on the right, as I've made those changes, here's my iPad. It's saying that there's a bunch of stuff it now needs to sync that it doesn't have from before. So let's go ahead and do another device. I'm gonna go ahead and do my phone next. And that's gonna be even more limited because on this device, I only have 512 gigabytes of hard drive space. There's a lot less space on most of our phones than there are on our other devices. And we need to be mindful of what we put there. So in this case, again, I'm gonna stick with the space saver as my base preset. And then for my sync collections, I only want optimized photos for everything in my portfolio, four and five stars and pick flags. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. I'm gonna switch over here now to my iPhone and into device sync policies. And I'm gonna, instead of doing anything here in originals, I'm gonna keep this here at space saver. And let's just go over here to optimized and add sync collection. And this is where I wanna go into by category. I'm gonna go down here and choose portfolio. And for a lot of folks, what you might wanna choose for your category to put on your phone could be your family history pictures. It could be your family photos. Whatever is most important to you that you have always available on your phone, that's what you're gonna to wanna to make sure that is always available there, even if you don't have an internet connection. So there we go, I've got my portfolio. I'm gonna go ahead and click done. And we're gonna call that portfolio. If I can spell, there we go. And that's now there. And then we're gonna quickly add those four and five stars and we're gonna add the pick flag. So let's go here and do four and five. And I'm gonna go ahead and go down here by file. I definitely only want these to be photos. So we're gonna say photos and done. So we'll go four to five photos and save. And let's go ahead and do one more to get those picks. And I'm gonna go up here to my by ratings, labels and flags, do those pick flags. And then we're also gonna go down here by file type. Again, we're gonna pin those photos and click done. And uh, pick photos, picked photos. So let's go ahead and hit save here. Now, if you have more than one phone on your account, let's say you're sharing your account with your spouse or maybe your kids, and you also want their phone to have that exact same sync policy that you just created here, I'm gonna go ahead and click apply changes. And then we're gonna save this as a specific phone sync policy. So you can save this to apply to other devices. So what you can do is go back up here to the preset list. If you click on that, you can go up here and scroll up a little bit and say save as a new preset. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And we're going to call this iPhone and hit save. So now if you have more than one phone on your on your account and you want them to have the exact same sync policy, you can reuse those that set of sync collections that you just created, reuse them on something else. So for instance, if I wanted to go back to my iPad, um, go ahead and hit save. If I wanted to go back to my iPad and I wanted to say, you know what, I wanna go ahead and put that iPhone policy on there. Or maybe I got a new iPad mini that doesn't have much space. I can go over here to my device sync policies. Again, go back up here to these presets. And then there's that new iPhone preset that I just created. If you need to manage these presets, you can go up here to manage presets um, or choose reset. So there's some great tools here to manage those and be able to keep things organized as you need them. I wanna do one more example for you guys here before we open up for questions. And that is to set up my backup travel SSD. So travel backups are an awesome tool that you have in Mylio Photos. There's a preset already in there for travel backup, which keeps the most 30 days recent of files on that device or um, the 30 days, I think it's 30 days, we'll double check. Um, but I wanna expand that because my travel backup drive actually has two terabytes of hard drive space, which means I have way more than what that needs for that particular uh, preset. So I wanna keep more stuff there than it's set up to hold. So what I wanna do is 
my original quality photos for 2024 and 2023, original quality photos for everything in my portfolio, and original quality photos for everything four and five star and pick flag. So we're gonna do this all in the originals tab on my travel backup drive. So let's go ahead and jump back over here to Mylio. And I'm gonna go down to my little travel backup drive. So we've got here travel backup. And I'm gonna go into device sync policies. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna reset this real quick. So reset this preset. There we go. So now it's back to the default travel backup. And I'm gonna add sync collections for those things that I just managed. So we're gonna start here with 2024 and 2023 photos. So we're in the originals tab, add sync collection, and we're gonna go ahead and choose photos. And then we're gonna go in here by date, by year, and grab 2023 and 2024. And go ahead and click done. And 23 to 24 photos. And save. So that's there now. Next, we wanna add all of our original quality photos for everything in portfolio. So let's go ahead and add a new sync collection. And I'm gonna go ahead and collapse that list here so we can find things a little bit easier. We're gonna go down here to portfolio and go ahead and let that refresh. Perfect. And click done. And we'll just call that portfolio. And save. So now we've got, there's my 23 to 24 portfolio. And we wanna do all of our original quality photos with four and five stars. So add a new sync collection. And we're gonna collapse that list with the backslash, go up here to rating label and flag. We're gonna do four and five stars. And again, I do wanna, I, I want to make sure this is only photos. So I'm gonna go in here by file type. We're gonna grab just photos and click done. And four to five star photos and save. And one more really quick here, we're gonna go ahead and do just photos and pick flags. So you can see up here at the top what is reflected. The preview here in the main part of the screen is showing you all of the images that are included so you get a visual representation. Go ahead and click done and then picked photos. There we go and click save. And now we have all of those that we want on our travel backup. And I can go ahead and hit apply changes and that's gonna start syncing all of that media that I just selected to that travel backup drive. So if I go ahead and find that right here, you can see that's selected a few thousand more images that need to go to this little drive. And so that's gonna be a great thing to have with me without needing to have my entire library. It's a tiny little travel SSD. I can plug that into my iPad. I can take it with my laptop and work from anywhere and have those most important files at original quality always with me. So. Those are some of the ways that I've found that I can use these new sync collections, and it really makes setting up your library very quick and easy. Um, I also wanted to go back over that agenda, make sure I hit everything here, um, that you guys understand a device sync policy, those presets that you can select at the top, and then how to customize them to meet your needs. Um, and then you can also create those custom presets. So you take those sync collections, you save it as your own preset, and you can then apply that to different devices. So with that, I want to go ahead and go ahead and see if anybody has any questions here. Looks like a few things are popping up in the chat. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we've got. So John is asking, I can see why you'd want to sync originals to a laptop for best resolution, even an iPad, but does it make any sense for an iPhone? Or would it be just as good to leave optimized images in a specific space for an iPhone? That's a great question and it really depends on how much space you have on your iPhone and what you wanna do with the images on your iPhone. If you're just browsing, it's great to be able to just have your optimized images and that's really good for most situations. However, there are a lot of people who like to edit their original quality files on their iPhones. Maybe that's the device that they like to do their editing on. So when you do that, you can actually have those original quality files available. So maybe you're sitting on a plane or something else and you, you don't have internet, but you have those original quality files available on your phone to go ahead and work. So that's one reason you might wanna do that. But for most people, iPhones are great for browsing, not necessarily editing because it's such a small screen, but it's really up to you and what you wanna go ahead and do with your files. Good question though. Jack says, thanks to the Claire demo. I'm glad you appreciated that. I like the new functionality. One question though, this feature allows me to sync part of my catalog in better quality. 
Is it also possible to sync part of my catalog in lower quality, even better, not at all? Even on Space Saver with 50,000 pictures, the phone, uh, my, my son's phone gets pretty full. In fact, you would only need 20,000 at max to identify which 20,000. So what you could do if you're working with a device that's really, really small, uh, is set that particular device to the preset of catalog only. What that's gonna do is minimize what MyLeo puts there. So it's gonna be the catalog and it's gonna be thumbnails. But from there, you can choose the optimized or original quality images that you want there. And in this case, probably only optimized and for things that are only relevant to him. So you might wanna just let it do to catalog only. And then if he's got an internet connection and a data plan on his phone or is connected to your home Wi-Fi, my Leo Drive, um, or if you have a home computer that's connected to a vault, will quickly pull in those optimized images on demand um, without necessarily taking up a ton of space. So if you're running really low on space, that catalog only is the way to go. All right, what else have we got here? Kathleen asked, to be able to move a photo from one folder to another, not copy, do you need to be able to have access to the original from the remote device, or can it be done with an optimizer thumbnail? Excellent question. You can do that with an optimizer thumbnail. So what Mylio is doing is it's got your entire catalog on every single one of your devices. And when you make a change in one of your catalogs on any device, as soon as Mylio can talk to your other devices, it synchronizes that change to those other devices. So you're seeing your full file structure, even if you only have thumbnail quality, you can see the full file structure in your folders view, no matter which device that you're on. And that allows you to go ahead and make those changes and move things even if you don't have your full quality images there. So that's that's a great, great question. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clear those filters there. All right, Jax says, I'm um, quite sure you don't need the original optimized, but I'll let Angela confirm. There we go, so there, I think that question was answered. All right, so John says, how does the custom sync work with spaces and which when to use which one? So spaces, you can choose a um, sync policy for a specific space. Um, so if you have a space set up, you can choose which sync policy preset you wanna use. So you would maybe go through, add the sync collections that are appropriate, save it as a new preset, and apply that to a specific space. So they can be used in conjunction with each other. It just is a visual builder to help make that easier. Um, it's gonna work similarly to what, if you had quick collections set up before and you use quick collections to set up what was specifically syncing, this just makes it easier. So you would just use them in conjunction with each other. If you're only one using your library or you don't have any restrictions, let's say with your spouse, you're both able to access everything, spaces wouldn't matter, but sync collections controls essentially how much space is being taken. All right, let's see what else we've got here. Jack, I'm glad the answer was helpful. And we've got a couple of hands up. Harold, you're up next. Yeah, uh, two questions. One is when when you were when you're optimizing your travel guide, your travel drive. There, there you then added 23 and 24. Well, that includes the previous three months. In this Correct. case, still 24. What's the significance of the or in that list? It would. So it's additive. So if if something in a sync collection overlaps with a previous sync collection, it's just gonna be like, oh, it's going to be additive. So anything that's in the sync collection will be there. And if this sync collection adds more things, it's gonna add more things. It doesn't subtract from it. Oh, okay. And then the other thing I noticed just as you were doing this, on both of my devices, the sync collection seems to have defaulted to documents less than five megabytes. Where'd that come from? So that's part of Space Saver and what that does is that any document that's on your is on your devices that's less than five megabytes, it's gonna go ahead and keep that on those devices as opposed to offloading it. You can uncheck that and that way all, all documents will go away or be only stored on your vaults rather. Um, but it, five megabyte documents are pretty small, so it will go ahead and sync those if there's room for it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And Darren, you're up next. Um, yeah, good morning, morning everyone. Uh, Angela, um, thank you. Great presentation as always. Um, I like the sync catalog uh, collection system um, and it brings me to what I was thinking. Um, am I right in thinking when you do the dedupe and use the dedupe tool, you need to have the original files on the device you're doing it with? Um, or correct. can you do it with optimized? 
you have to have access to the original. So it doesn't necessarily have to be on that device, but if you're, if say you're on a space saver laptop and you have your vault connected, you can yes. go ahead and run dedupe. But if your vault isn't connected and you don't have access on that device to those full quality images, then you can't run dedupe. So that's part of what the reason why that works that way is so it can run specific checks on the individual files and really truly make sure that they're duplicates. So it's just a, a protection mechanism. Okay, cool. So thank you. So I started to import the, uh, sorry, copy across all the originals, but of course that's going to fill up my laptop to do a proper comparison. You just said though, I think the key is that if I've got the vault connected to the device mm -hmm. that I'm on, like my laptop, is, it, is that going to work? I don't have, yes. you know, because, okay, because my, I'm using my laptop to do it, but my vault is on my little um, computer that I had running 24 seven with Miley on it. So I would have to jump onto that computer and do it without having to import the originals if I'm running space Correct. savings. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, that's really cool. But I do like this collection system and that's why I was thinking maybe I have to just import or just bring across those those items I want to for the folders I want to download. Sorry, it sounds a little bit confusing. Maybe it's too <laughs> early here. <laughs> but I do, thank you, you've helped me. And I think I will move my um, my vault across to my laptop and then start to go through the dedupe process, which incidentally, after watching your video yesterday, last night, an old one, was very helpful in using the auto tick feature. So, and yeah. setting a primary folder that I wanted to focus on to remove. So, yeah. Sorry, a bit of a side sideline into that, but um, the sync collection yeah. thing, yeah, that's really helpful. All right. Thanks for your time. You're very welcome. All right. Let's see here. I don't see any other questions in the chat that have popped up. Mark, you've got your hand up. I think you're on mute, Mark. There we go. I was muted. Sorry. That's uh, all right. I, I've seen those things in there since I got the update, but I haven't touched them yet. And I'm glad you did this session today because this opens up some neat possibilities. Since I gave up Lightroom, okay, let's say before I gave up Lightroom, every time I went to the beach to do a professional shoot, I took my laptop with me because I got everything on it. Um, I left my external vaults home, but I took the laptop and I've got a tripod that has both a laptop stand in it and my camera support. So I was tethering straight into Lightroom, which nice. sort of works. It's not ideal, yeah. but it works. Um, it, it's quicker than mountain and then mountain cards. So anyway, um, what I've been thinking of late since I gave up Lightroom is I was going to get a new iPad. My iPad is really old. Um, I think it's a 2017 or a 2018. I can't remember. It's a really old one. Anyway, it's, it's one terabyte, but it's it's pretty slow by today's standards. So I was thinking of getting a new iPad with enough RAM that I could put my entire collection on it. And that way I can edit in the field because the screen's big enough to, to, to do most edits. Um, but this opens up some new possibilities of, of how to do things in the field because you can keep a lot more of what you do need and less of what you don't need. Um, I currently don't segregate, but like, well, I do have one collection that's models only when I'm shooting at the beach. And that particular collection, I keep <clears throat> a full size everywhere mm -hmm. um, because occasionally I sell them and I want to have them with me, even on my telephone in case there's, there's yeah. a bag. Um, yeah. But this opens up a whole new set of possibilities. I, I need to rethink what I'm doing there now. <laughs> um, I really like this feature. So I, cool. I have to admit, I like this enough. I'm glad that Rich chose to do it ahead of drag and drop in albums. <laughs> this is really <laughs> cool. Um, I will have to tell him that. And, and the dev team did a hell of a job. This is a complicated process. I know what's involved in doing something like this, and it is really yeah. complicated. And the and or conditions they have to deal with automatically, I'm, I'm really yeah. impressed. It's very nice. Thank you for doing this. You're welcome. I'm, and I'm really glad that, you know, seems like a lot of people are going to find this helpful and make the process easier. So a lot of this functionality was already here. It's just a little bit more hidden and way more complex to do. So this 
the visual interface here makes this so much simpler. Uh, Lori, you've got your hand up. I do. <clears throat> Did you mention Mineal Dry Plus? And the I benefits? didn't actually. Okay. So that is another great way that you can use this particular tool and control how much cloud storage you're using. So whether you're using Mylio Drive Plus or you've got an S3 connection and you just don't want to overload on charges for the amount of uh, storage that you need, you don't have to necessarily use cloud storage as a vault, meaning it holds everything. You can use the same process with your cloud storage to say only store my best work or only keep my archival raw files or whatever it is that you need to only store those things on your cloud storage. So that's one of the things that makes Mylio Drive unique and also makes Mylio Photos unique is that when you use the cloud, you have control of what goes there as opposed to a lot of other services that it's either all or nothing and it makes you can get very granular with what you're saving where. So keep that in mind as you're setting up your cloud services as well, especially if you're trying to control the cost, because I know that like with Mylio Drive Plus, for instance, uh, doing the two terabyte for $11.98 a month is quite affordable and very competitive. But if you have a larger library and you need to go up to the five terabyte plan, or maybe the, the add another five terabytes after that, you're talking at, you know about $30 a month for each five terabyte increment. So that adds up really fast for a lot of us. And so you don't necessarily need to have everything in the cloud, but maybe just the most important things. If you're working on family history and you're preserving a genealogy project, maybe having those archived in the cloud, but maybe not some of your you know, other day-to-day -day stuff that's not as important. So it's completely up to you what you're working on and what's important, what you wanna have stored offsite. Uh, let's see here, John says, Powerful new feature opens a lot more possibilities than having all your photos everywhere all the time. Not everyone can have Mac storage and new devices all the time. That is absolutely true. And we wanna make sure that everybody is able to use and enjoy these features. All right, and Darren, you've got your hand up again. Yeah, thank you. A couple of uh, other points have just popped up. Um, the, that's a great idea. And I was worried about how I was going to group things in order to take advantage of the uh, Cloud Drive Plus, sorry, uh, Milio Drive Plus Cloud, yeah. So I think that's a great idea and I did watch the presentation and that was a, a last week and that was great. So I like that concept of using this thing. Um, just incidentally, the little flags or the little sections above each of the folders now showing you the size of the oh. content. I think that's fantastic. Um, <laughs> it was so helpful last night when I was trying to sort things out and figure out what to move around. So um, I've been away for a little bit, but I think, is that a new feature that came through with the-, the It is, the, and it's a new redesign for 24.4. And I for those of you who, um, you can turn that off if you like the old view where you're seeing it just in the square grid. I love this new view. Um, and then if you're Me not too. seeing the numbers at the top, just try increasing your zoom here to make those folders bigger because when you make them tiny, those numbers do disappear. Yeah, and that's what I noticed. And your mobile devices, <laughs> pinch and zoom. Yeah, that's a, look, a fantastic feature. I just please pass that back too. I think that's great. Um, and then finally, we talked about I was going to move my vault. I'd also set up a, a third vault um, and I haven't moved everything across until I tidy up. How um, are people experiencing any issues if they disconnect it for a few months and then plug it in? Plug it back no, in? There, sh there shouldn't be. It shouldn't so be an issue, right? It's just it a vault. It should not be an issue. Yeah. Um, the things to kind of watch out for is when you do plug it back in, uh, if it's been a while and maybe there's been a couple of software updates, just give it some time for Mylia to recognize it, to run any catalog updates on the vault that need to happen. And ah. then I also do caution people on letting traditional hard drives sit on the shelf for too long. A few yes. months should be fine, yeah. but um, traditional hard drives have moving parts and those moving parts in order to keep them in good working condition need to be spun up every now and again. So yeah. I don't recommend keeping a traditional hard drive on the shelf for like six months to a year or more without yeah. actually using it. Because if something happens, it could freeze up those parts and then you lose that data. So just don't let it sit for too long. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. No, brilliant. Thank you. I didn't think there'd be an issue. Thank you. Yeah, I think you'll be fine. All right. Mark, you got your hand up. Yeah, one one more. Am I muted? No, I'm not muted. Yep, you're <laughs> muted. <laughs> one, one more quick question. With this 
as you said, this stuff has been in there before, but it was a little harder to deal with. Um, with this new interface that makes it a lot easier to deal with, we don't lose the ability to download an original to a device that only has optimized, right? Nope, you can still do that. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go into something that's older here that I know I don't necessarily have the original here. So let's go back into 2010s, go into like 2016. And there were some fun ducks playing in puddles behind my house. So let's say that I wanted to grab these pictures and I wanted the original of this on this computer right now. I can right click on this and I can say download Perfect. original right here. Perfect. You can Perfect. also, so a couple of other things you can do here. So if I go up and open the info panel, you'll notice that this sync policy here is now lit up. This is a button. Hmm. You can click that and you can choose what Very to sync. Cool. This is a permanent sync policy. If you do this right click and download originals, this basically temporarily caches the file. So once you're done using it, if you don't touch it again for a while, Mylia will offload it if you're not using it. Right. This right here is a permanent sync policy. Hmm. So you can permanently say, I always wanna have this original here on this device. Uh, that can also be done here in the storage tab. If you go here to sync policy local, you can change it here, but it's much faster and easier. Just right here, that little icon, you can click on that and change it there now too. That is a neat feature. I didn't know that was there. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, this opens yeah, and, up. Yeah, you know, a lot of people complain that that one, it used to not be clickable right here. And it's like, well, it seems like it should be something you can change. Right. But well, now it is. I don't think I need to buy a new iPad now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miley. I'm glad we could save you some money. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 did, I don't want to do it, but I really hate lugging my computer in the field. This This computer was too expensive to be a portable knockabout device so i hear you the the, the big uh, ipads can get pretty pricey these days too some of the the new ipad pros are especially if you get them with a big hard drive they yeah, are not cheap it's over 25 than a laptop but they're they're not cheap yeah it's over 2500 now for a big ipad it's getting pretty insane but you know my my notebook pretty powerful was, yeah my notebook was more than double that so it was they're horrible. I mean, you pay dearly for Apple products, but they last almost forever. I mean, a 2017 tablet is, it's on a long life and it and it's it always is. in the field, always in the field. And it's, it's in a case, but it's, it's been dropped. It's been put in luggage and bounced around <laughs> with aircraft handlers. And I, I mean, I don't go out of my way to keep it on my person and safe, but my computer I do, but this is, this is, these are two cool, really neat features that I I hadn't really looked at. Very nice. Awesome. Yeah, Glad Rich, you're happy with them. Rich and his and team. And I will tell Rich. <laughs> they, they deserve a pat on the back. This is really impressive. This is really cool. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Are there any other questions before we wrap up for today? All right. Well, uh, and Darren wants to say thank you for the speed at which webinars and Coffee Break replays are uploaded. That is all on Lori. So Lori is a rock star. And not only does she do our Ready, Set, Go program and so many other things, she's editing our videos now and getting them out usually the same day. We tell people it can take one to two days after an event. She gets them out so fast and I just want to give her a shout out and a round of applause. So um, thank you guys all for being here today. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and come join us again next week for Q&A, coffee break. Uh, we always have lots of fun stuff for you. Make sure you check out the uh, post poll. Let us know what you think of the new features. We'd love to get your feedback and share that with the team. So with that, have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Bye everyone. Andrew. Bye.